the place was not uh, like I thought it would be. Uh, it was far more modernized and uh, clean and uh, planned and ordered. And I expected something a little more, uh, a little more patinaed and a little more of the old. You know, when I say the old, I don't mean a thousand years ago. I mean 1920s, 19, you know what I mean? Like turn of the century. After, uh, after Wall Street, I was looking to play a more physical action oriented part. And uh, my agents uh, sent me this script and uh, the character I liked. And I also liked the fact that it, uh, it dealt with uh, another subject matter uh, and an opportunity for us to explore our two cultures, both our differences, what we agree about and what we don't agree about. And at the same time, uh, hopefully make a, a two hour entertaining movie and those were the qualities that uh, attracted me to it um, initially um, Jaffe and Lansing I'd worked with on on uh, Fatal Attraction and are much more than just commissioned producers Stanley Jaffe has won an Oscar for Kramer versus Kramer and and they're both excellent producers and allowed me more freedom to focus on uh, on the on the acting ものすごくやっぱり中に入ってると思った、うん、自分のやっぱり大事な本当に大事な役をやらせてもらってるというのはもちろんあったねやり方の違いをもし聞いてるんだとしたらね、まあ、例えば大阪でもあんなふうに堂々と全部を交通を遮断してねものすごいライティングして撮るっていうことは日本映画の場合はありえない。We've just seen the scene with him singing with Andy. How difficult was that to put together? Extremely difficult. Did it take very long? And what did they have to do? やはりずいぶん時間をかけて練習したんですか？そしてどういうふうに練習したんですか？ええ、スタジオにも行ったし。えー、ミュージシャンの人と実際にこの映画に出てるミュージシャンの人と特別にセッティングしてもらって、えー、スタジオでも練習しましたしテープに撮ってもらって一人でも聴きましたしそれは本当に全然楽しむところには行ってませんね。I knew that Ken was an extraordinarily respected actor in Japan who had never even smiled in a movie. Let alone sung in a film. So、uh, I remember after the sequence, Ken said to me,、uh, Andy san, I've never done this before. What? And he says, I, and then they were translated, and said, I never, never sing, never smile. <laughs> hey, Ed, big shot from New York. <laughs> Sir, you are a chap liver. Let's go, partner. Okay, partner. I'm going to put Brother Ray in a can. Good night. Good night. Impressive with, with Ken Takakura is the fact that he had to speak in English. He's really had to learn the English almost to extent for this part. And that somebody who had sort of such an image that he's had is willing to step out and has the courage to try a different type of part and to really take part in an international、uh, production. Ken Takakura is Assistant Inspector Masamoto, assigned to help Douglas and his partner Charlie Vincent, played by Andy Garcia. These two people are, are at a loss in this country where obviously the language barrier is. Your first option. Director Ridley Scott on the set with Kate Capshaw, who plays Joyce, an American working in a Japanese hostess bar. Until you go to Japan, you really can't imagine that it is the most foreign environment you could possibly place yourself in. No sign is legible. There's no English subtitle to street signs. There are no street signs. I mean, it's you'd be lost. I wanted the Japanese to be not the way we expect them to be. And、uh, I wanted the Sato character to be a very,、uh, obviously, be a very dangerous character, but at the same time, to be intelligent, to have a real point of view, and be, basically be trying to change the system. What are you doing?
it was very obvious that, that this was a, a young leading man who had, who had a certain sexuality and, uh, and a certain um, uh, uh, charisma. I was quite overwhelmed because I felt that he had so much to offer as an artist. He had a tremendous inner, inner strength. Um, he had a strong core. He, he acted as if he had a secret. Mysterious character. And that was what was wonderful because you couldn't ever tell what he was thinking. You know, he just had a way of being there and, and being inscrutable, as it were. And, uh, and that was very important. Cheers. There you go. I remember thinking that, you know, Matsuda-san was more than we ever imagined. And you could see just his, his extraordinarily breadth of acting, the, 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 the dynamic range. Take it from him, huh? There was that wonderful feeling of being in the presence of an excellent actor, uh, an actor who always surprised you. Uh, you never knew what he was going to do next, which I think was one of uh, Matsuda-san's wonderful qualities, is you never knew what was going to happen. I've been fortunate to work with some very dynamic actors, and I found him to be as good as or, or better than most actors I've ever worked with. After the film came out, I got a lot of calls about him, not just for parts that um, required a Japanese actor, but for parts that required... And Matsuda, I figured that was it. It was the only one. They said, do you want to read? No, I think he's it, he's it, he's it. Um, Matsuda was... Uh, Charming, I met him in Tokyo, charming, elegant, great sense of humor, even though he didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I had to have an interpreter there who we listen to the interpreter and then in three seconds get it what I'm getting to. But his real talent was in comedy. So he's coming from comedy and I think very successful television comedy. And uh, my only concern was could he be dark? <laughs> Yusaka Matsuda was a matinee idol in Japan. Very good looking guy, extremely tall uh, for Japanese. He was about six foot two, spoke no English, and gambled to play this vicious villain. And I have the greatest memories for him. He was one of the nicest people in the whole world. I mean, you would sort of be sitting on the set talking to him, and he was so sweet and warm, and then this like evil would come out. <laughs> He had a look about him that was well before Keanu Reeves adopted it for The Matrix. It was just a modern approach to a traditional man. So there's more of an extravagance, and it's used for intimidation, and which is very different than the everyday salary men and everyday people that live in Japan. The interesting thing was, again, my Celtic side was pulling, saying, drop him on the stake. But if you drop him on the stake, then in a funny kind of way, you've got a dead end. You've just killed him. It's finished. But I was worried that Matsuda was such an attractive villain that he actually better have his comeuppance in the long form, which would better be imprisonment. And so uh, the, what I thought instead, let's have them both think about it. But on the take where I was going to kill him, I grabbed him. I looked at the stake, and I looked at him, and he smiled at me. He had this beautific smile. And I always regret taking out that kind of smile because I thought that's the moment he was actually willing to die. In other words, it's a fair fight. You, ha you have the absolute control over me. It is your choice to kill me right now, and that's fine. So in that look, that's what it was. And to make a long story short, uh, Yusaka Matsuda died after the movie was over. He'd had stomach cancer, the entire picture. 
He never said a, a word about it. And I'm always haunted by the last time I you know, really saw him on that scene when he was smiling and he obviously knew that he was, he was dying. You have no part in this. I am the solution to your problems. Well, it's not over yet. Here I am, Nick! You can get him, boss. You and me. Michael Douglas. Black Rain.